Okay, so we are um, still making videos about how to name ionic stuff. We've already gone through how to write the formula and the name for binary compounds where the metal comes from group one. So let's move on from binary and talk about what happens if it's not binary and it has a polyatomic. So for group one metals, or well, so for group one, two, or aluminum, right? He's the weird outlier. Um, we're going to figure out how to do that uh, plus polyatomics. It's essentially the same rule set that we went over, uh, but we're just going to apply to a slightly different scenario. So we're going to go from formula to name. I'm going to show you the formula for, for a polyatomic, and we're going to learn how to do the name. And then, of course, in the next video, I'll give you the name, and you'll write the formula. So let's say that the formula looks like this. Um, okay? So right away, we're still going to ask ourselves the same series of questions, right? We're going to look, and we're going to say, um, that is a metal, right? So we know it's ionic. We know that it's in group one, because we could go back and look at our periodic table. Right? And I could make sure that I know that he's in group one. So, um, so we're cool. We know that he's uh, going to exist with a plus one charge. Just like we said before, um, if this is a metal from one of these locations, we simply say his name. Metals get their full name, potassium. No problem. Now, if this uh, had been one element, right, we would go to the periodic table and we would do the spelling change. We'd write the first syllable, we'd drop the ending and all of that. But we can see that this is not an element from the periodic table. This is not binary, right? There are more than two elements here not binary. So that means it's polyatomic. If it's polyatomic, we have to have our list memorized, right? Right now I have it on hand, so I'll show you how to go and use the list. As soon as you see that this is polyatomic, you want to look at the formula. We have SO4, right? We have to go to the list to find his name. We're not going to find the name on the periodic table. The only place we're going to be able to find this name is on this list. So we start scanning, right? We start scanning. H3O, H2Cl, we come over here. There's an SO3 and there's an SO4. We had SO4, right? So this is our guy. SO4, they're telling us that his charge is negative two. That's gonna be handy later, but right now we just need to match the formula, SO4. Then it tells us the name. This is where we have to go to get the name. The name here is sulfate, right? So we're going to take that name back and that's gonna be how we name the compound. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna call this sulfate because we went and we looked him up. So his name is potassium sulfate. As long as you have the list memorized, this is actually easier, right? We don't have to go to the periodic table and do a spelling change. I name the metal and I name the polyatomic ion, potassium sulfate, and that's it. Let's do one more quick one. Let's say that I show you um, that. Okay? So, again, you're going to confirm that it's ionic first. You're going to want to make sure that it's ionic. We have our metal, right? We said that he's one of the outliers that gets to live in this binary compound world where we have our, our main group metals, we're calling them, meaning they're not transition, right? So he gets his name. That's aluminum. Now, I see that this is not binary. There's some nitrogen, there's some oxygen. The fact that there are three of them is of no concern to us when we're writing the name, 
right? There are three of them, but the thing that there are three of is NO3. This is the formula that you have to go and look up. The fact that there are three of them does not change what his name is. So we have to go back to the list and look for NO3. So we go back to the list. We start looking for NO3. He's right here. NO3 carries a negative charge. That might be useful later. But for now, it's important that the name for the formula NO3 is nitrate. So we can just go back and call this guy aluminum nitrate. And that's it for naming it. That's not so bad. Right. So in the next video, I'll show you the name and then we'll build the formula and that'll take just a little bit more work. Okay, so that's not so bad.